Lift family, welcome to The Lift Online. We are so glad that you decided to join us this rainy Sunday morning. You know, we're praying that wherever you're watching from, it is sunny, um, but the rain today is not stopping us from gathering in the house of the Lord and just worshiping our King. If we have not met yet, my name is Tanya. This is Caroline, one of my good friends, and we wanna know who you are. So if you are new, we wanna give you a big shout out so put your name in the comments, I mean in the chat rooms or in the comments if you're watching this during the week um, so that we can give you a shout out and fill out our digital connection card. Just scan the QR code right below me. That's just a way for us to connect. Yeah, and so like Tanya said, just go ahead and comment below um, where you're watching from. Yep. Um, tell us a little fun fact about yes. yourself. That would be really that cool. That would be fun. Um, and you can also take this link and you can send it to somebody. So it's kind of like inviting a friend to church. Yeah. Um, just send it on over. You guys can watch it together. Yeah. Or you, you can do double FaceTime where you like oh watch church yeah. and watch and FaceTime at the same time. So you can For see sure. the reaction. That's cool. Yeah, too. do it. Um, and then be sure to check out our Lyft app. Scan the every we have a QR code for everything. So Literally. it's so easy. Take out your phone, go to your camera, scan the QR code, and you will have it downloaded and ready before church starts. It has some awesome features. You can follow along with Bible plans. You can sign up for an L group. You can send prayer requests throughout the week. It's just a great way to see what's happening. Yeah, so to see what's happening on the app, you will yep. see um, next Sunday we have Baptism Sunday. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! So we are we very Baptism yes, Sunday. we are very excited about that. Yeah. Um, so basically, if you don't know what baptism is, it is just an outward expression yep. of a decision that you have made. Yeah. So if you've recently accepted Christ as your Savior and you want to take the next step, you can scan the QR code. Yeah. We got one for everything, like she said. So yeah. scan it below, sign up. We would love to see you getting dunked. Yes, <laughs> and maybe you've already taken that next step, but you know someone in your life who is has not yet taken that next step. Um, spread the word so that we could just have them baptized here oh, at the yeah. Live. Yeah. So over the past couple of weeks, our church has been walking through a relationship series. We love love. Oh, yeah. um, it's called Love is a Fight. And if you missed any of the past couple of weeks, be sure to check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel um, so you can catch up. They're really good. You're not. You're going to want to make sure to catch up. Today, Pastor Lance is talking all about finding the right person. You know, we hear that a lot. Um, especially just in the world. It's like, I'm waiting on the right person. Is he the right one? But today, no. past <laughs> how do you be the right one? That's yes. what we're learning about today. Come on, preach. <laughs> right, Pastor Lance is hitting on how can um, you expect to find the right person when you're not the right person. Exactly. And this is not only for people that are single and looking for relationships. This can apply to everyone, no matter what stage of life you're in. And this isn't only limited to romantic relationships, relationships yeah. with family, friends, like all of that. Um, you need to focus on being the right person in that. So make sure to stick around if you have, I'm sure by now the Lyft app is done downloading. Oh, so yeah. pull it up and you can see all the songs we're doing and the message notes. So you are sure. ready for worship. Ready to roll. We hope you enjoy. <laughs> Good morning.
in this place. Sing, I will not be silent. 
in this place a lot of times we come into this place and we just don't know what to give God and we think we don't have enough to give him but he deserves everything that you have even if it's not enough you might walk in here and say Lord I'm not adequate enough I'm not clean enough I'm not fixed up enough but guess what it doesn't matter all you have to do is bring yourself ready and willing to be encountered by the Holy One and you will be changed all he asks is all that you are Man, it's good to be in the house of God. Somebody do me a favor, turn to five people, give them a high five, tell them it's good to be in the house of God and take your seat. Good morning. We're so happy you're with us today. Thank you for being you can be seated. Uh, if you're watching online, let me just say thank you for joining us this morning. I hope that you're dry and you're warm. And I uh, just thank you for being here on this wet and cool day. So uh, you, get a, you get an extra star for being here, okay? If you're online, we'll give you a star as well. But uh, thank you for being here. Uh, let me just say a couple of things real quickly. One is if you're a guest this morning, please fill out the connection card. We have a special gift for you as you leave this morning. Maybe you've already picked it up. That's fine as well. But we just want to know a little bit about you. And if we can help you in any way, please let us know uh, if we can answer any questions that you may have about our church. Also, I just want to remind you that April the 22nd and the 23rd, it's a very special weekend for us. We're celebrating 15 years as a church, yes. We'll be having services on Saturday at three o'clock, six o'clock, Sunday morning, two services, and we're expecting the room to be full, all four services. So we're gonna encourage you to start writing down names, inviting people, friends, neighbors, uh, family. We want everyone to be here that weekend. We're gonna celebrate like no other time that we've celebrated it's going to be exciting so please be here and be a part of that okay put that down on your calendar also this morning we hadn't planned this but you know what we're going to be baptizing at the end of the service so so let me say this if you've not been baptized next sunday we're baptizing as well you can go online. You can fill out a request there. We'll get up with you. We'll contact you, get you all prepared. Next Sunday, be here for baptisms as well. And this morning, what a joy it is to do that at the end of the service. So uh, you stand with me. Let's pray together. Continue to worship, not only in song, but also in giving. Thank you for your generosity. And thank you for all that God's doing through you as a church today. Lord, thank you so much. We love you. We just give you all the praise, all the glory. Thank you for what you're going to do in this service. You brought us here for this time, this hour, and in this place for you to speak to each and every one of us. Thank you for those online. We love you. We just give you all the glory in what you're going to do this morning. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As we continue to worship today, I want to place this thought on the table. A lot of times uh, when we come into a worship setting and we, we deal with all the things that are going on in our life, 
we begin to focus on the things that are going wrong instead of putting our focus on Jesus. And what happens is we focus on the bad things and not the things that God has done and is doing. So I wanna encourage you, no matter what you're facing today, choose Thanksgiving. The enemy is, 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 is not victorious when we choose to thank Jesus for his faithfulness. So instead of saying God was faithful, how about we flip that and say God is faithful? Because here's the deal, God is not in the business of failing. Newsflash, he hadn't failed, he's not going to fail. So therefore we as his people must remind ourselves that God not was faithful, he is faithful. And when we remind ourselves of those things, the response, the natural response is thanksgiving. That doesn't mean everything changes, but that means our mind changes, which we open ourselves up to things that God is doing and wants to do in our life. So as we continue to worship this morning, we're gonna sing a song of gratitude to Jesus. No matter where you are, I would dare you to open up your mouth and thank him for everything that he is doing because he is faithful. Come on, let's sing. All my words fall short I got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do Every song must sing, but you never do. So I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Nothing less fit for a king Except for a heart singing Hallelujah Hallelujah I've got one response I've got just one is
Come on, every voice. So I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing high. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, oh weary head. Lift your head and sing this to Jesus. Come on, sing it in faith. Hey, so come on, my soul. Come on, let hope come alive in this room. Come on, we're going to lift our voices and praise Jesus with thanksgiving in this place. Come on, feel this place, feel this atmosphere, lift your voice. Come on, lift up your soul to Jesus. Lift it high to sing this to Jesus. Come on. It's just you and Jesus right now. Sing it to him. Come on. Lift it up. Hallelujah. Sing, I know it's not. I know it's not. But that's nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing Give him praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's talk to him. Father God, um, all we have is ourselves to offer you. God, the the only reasonable response that we have is to give our all to the one who gave his all for us. Thank you, Jesus.
thank you, Jesus, that it is you that gives us meaning and purpose and direction in life, that it is it's you that makes us worthy. Jesus, I pray that you would receive all of, all of our praise, all of our worship. Just receive it into your ears. We love you. And now as we, as we just open up your word and, and Lord, do what only you can do, and that is to change us. I beg you, God, change us. We love you in Jesus' name. We pray, amen, amen, amen. Come on, one more time. Come on, one more time, yeah, yeah. Team, thank you so much. Y'all, thank you. Thank you so much. Church, you go ahead and, and uh, I'll be seated. And Well, you look good. Even with an hour less of sleep last night, you look good. Some of you are looking at me like, yeah, you don't believe it. Come on. Come on, you got to believe that. Um, hopefully, you walked in with a Bible or um, maybe you have in your back pocket, you have your phone and you would go ahead and pull out and, and open the app because I'm sure you've got the Lift Live app. Okay, so if you don't, go ahead and download that. But here's the cool thing about it. When you open up the app, you will see the very top of the app has Emmanuel's face on it. And if you will click that face, it's going to lead you to a place where it's got all kind of information about today's service. You'll see the set list. And then also there's a place where you can follow along with the message today and take notes. And I, I want to encourage you to take notes, write things down, fill in the blanks, and, and email it to yourself when everything is over. Uh, I'm super excited that we get to baptize here in, a, in just a few moments. David, David Hall is with us, and uh, he's going he's gonna to get dunked. All right, he's going to get dunked. I look forward to that, and it's going to be fun. It really is. So uh, let's just start out real quick. Uh, we're we're our, our single people in the house. Single people, would you raise, raise your hands? Come on, hands up. Like, like, get them way up, single people, single people, single people. Now, you're, all of you are looking at me. Look around. Single, get your hands up. Come on. Look around, single people. You never know. You never know. I met Andrea in a church, so you just never know. The churches are the best place to meet, to meet people, all right? Uh, married people. Any married people in the house? Come on. Represent. Yeah, the married folks. I love it. I got a question for you married people. You ready? Are you ready, married people? Did you marry the right one? Hold on. Hold on. Don't raise your hand on that one. I'm sure there's been a, a time or two when you've asked that question, though, right? Did you, did you marry the right one? I want to... I want to flip the question a little bit. And here's the, here's the flip. You ready? Are you the right one? Just think about it. Are you the right one? Single people, let me come back to you. Are you the right one? This is important. Last week we said this, that the quality of our relationships determines the quality of our lives. So we don't want to take this lightly. What we're talking about is so important because you, you know it. When your relationships are bad, everything's bad. So we, we want to get this... Together, you know, growing up, um, relationships were confusing. And rightfully so. Think about it. The, who were who the people that we had to, um, to follow after their example? Our parents? 
And depending on what home you grew up in, maybe your parents had a great relationship, a great marriage. And, and if they did, you'll, you'll take some of that, take some of what you learn, and you'll carry it over into your marriage. But let's say you came from a dysfunctional home. Chances are you'll take a lot of what you experienced in that home and you'll carry it into another relationship. You, you think about it. We learn from our friends. Those of you that have friends that are dating, you're, you're subconsciously, you're watching them date. And you're, you're picking up things that you're going to do as you date. Same way with marriages. Your closest friends, married couples, your closest friends, chances are your, your, your marriage is going to be a lot like theirs. And so if you're hanging around a bunch of dysfunctional people who's having a bunch of married problems, you better check. This is real serious stuff. We, um, we, when we look at relationships, like it's confusing. We, we look at movies and, and TV and, and we're like, this stuff, it's on the TV screen, but it's not real life. And just to remind you, um, they're actors. It's all fake. We're doing this series, Love is a Fight, um, just simply because I just don't want to stand passively by and watch relationship after relationship, marriage after marriage fail and get messed up. This is really a big deal. The answer today is the same as the answer has always been, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus Christ, and he will change everything if, if you will let him. Uh, one of the things that we said last week, and, and we're going to really press into it this week, is that we put so much focus on finding the right person that we never become the right person. And maybe that's where you find yourself. Like you, you just have never become the right person. And, and I want to give you like a, almost like a bottom line for today. You will not have the right relationships when you're the wrong person. You just won't. If you're the wrong person, you're just never going to have the right relationships. So important. So that's, that's why today what we're going to do is we're going to ask some questions and we're going to try to answer that. Like, how do you know if you're the right person? How can you be the right person? So important. Because to have the right relationships... You've got to be the right person. Some of you are probably going to ask this question, like, well, how do I find the right person? I mean, that's a, that's a real question. I get it. We, we want to, hopefully by the end, you're going to kind of understand this a little bit, but how do you find the right person? Anybody have an answer for that? I know what society tells us. Society, it, it's, it's like... You know, you, I mean, they've got all kinds of ways of finding the right person. Growing up, for us, it was different in the 80s. Now, it's, it's like, you. What, what do you do? Do you stalk them on TikTok? <laughs> or on the gram? And, and if you are, how, how long do you do that? How, how long? How long do you do that? How long do you give up someone else's account and you start following them yourself? Right? Or, or how long until you start... Well, you, do, you know, direct message them? I mean, what's, what's the deal? What, what is it? When we were growing up, we got our friends involved. If there was someone that I liked, oftentimes I, I would, you know, I had a friend that knew them, and I, hey, will you go up and ask them? Like, just see if they're interested. How do you do it? Is it an app? Do you swipe right? You go to christianmingle.com? I mean... Maybe some of you, some of you, you join the dream team. You start serving, you start greeting, and you work the front door, right? As, as people were coming to church, you're taking notes. Okay, yep, I like that one. Yeah, okay. Excuse me, what's your name? Thank you very much. That's why Caroline serves. I, I, I figured it out. I figured it out. She's there. 
I'm just, I got to give Caroline a hard time. But really, though, I, I, how, do, how, how do you? How do you find the right relationship? This just really matters because wh- whether you're dating or, or you're married or you know, it, it, with a friendship, it really makes a difference. And you will not have the right relationships if you're the wrong person. You just won't. I, I love um, what James Allen in his book, As a Man Thinketh. Okay, it's a, it's a book that was published back in the early 1900s. And, and this is a, a quote from that book. This is what he says. You, you don't attract what you want. You attract what you are. Now, for today's message, I, I want to I turn that just a little bit. And I want us to say it like this. You don't attract who you want. You attract who you are. So, single people. If you keep attracting, you know, dates that are like, I don't know where I get these people from. Okay. This is so important. Single people, who who do you need to be? Married people. Who do you need to be? That's what I'm entitled today's message. Who do you need to be? If you're single, um, you need to be somebody before you start looking for somebody. If you're married, you're probably thinking, well, hold on a minute, it's, it's too late, I'm married. <laughs> now you just, you just got some work to do. Who do you need to be? We, uh, we, Look at society, and society is so funny how it, it tries to tell us who we need to be. If you're on social media, you need to be one of those people that's got the little blue check mark, you know. You need to be one of those people that have the thousands and thousands and thousands of followers. You need to be the prettiest. You, you need to be the, the, the fittest you need to be the wealthiest. I mean, you see it everywhere. You, you go to uh, Netflix. You, you, you turn it on. You watch it. it. It's all about that. You know, that instead of the Outer Banks being about a bunch of teenagers growing up, now it's about finding the gold, being the, the wealthiest. I mean, er- everything's about that. You, you, you've got fathers Big John and Ward, what are they doing? They're, they're giving up their families. They're, they're literally dying for this kind of thing. That, that's what society tells us. If you're, you watch The Bachelor, you know, you just casually date 30 people. Make out with half of them. Eliminate the ones you don't want. Fall in love with a couple. I mean... Who do you need to be? Who do you need to be? Um, we're going to press into that one right now. Um, if you have a Bible, turn, open it up to um, Colossians chapter 2. Okay, Colossians chapter 2. Last week, I touched on this last week. This week, this is where we're going to hang out. Two verses, Colossians chapter 2. While you're going there or, or you're getting ready to, to, we'll read it together in just a few moments. I want to set the context up for you. Um, there is, there's a character that you, you're not going to see necessarily in the verses today. Um, Epaphras is a, um, a guy that started this church. He started the church in, in Colossae, okay? And when he planted the church... It was a thriving church, but what happened is over time, things begin to happen. They, um, they begin to drift. In fact, years later, he learns that the church that he planted started swerving and, and started um, falling into a lot of errors started entering into the church. They started believing false teaching and false practices. And in fact, it wasn't just something that they believed, but it influenced how they lived. It it influenced the the life of the Christians, and it threatened their faith. Think about that for us. We live in a culture that is influencing Christians. 
We live in a culture that is affecting our faith. It's, it's threatening it. And so um, Epaphras, he is going to go and he's going to meet with the Apostle Paul. By this time, Paul's already in prison. He's been imprisoned in Rome and, and he's there and, and they have this conversation about what's going on in the church. And that's what sparked Paul into writing this, this letter to the church. He wrote this letter to say to them, listen, don't believe everything you see. Don't believe everything that you hear. You've got to hold on to Jesus. He's the truth. He's the one that he's the one that that you need. He's he's your Lord. He's the sufficient one. He's worthy of everything. And that's Paul. He's going to write this to the church. And we're going to pick up two verses, Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. This is him writing to the church. Look what he says to them and and he's saying to us as well. And now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down deep, in, uh, grow down into him, and let your lives be built on him. He's talking to Christians. He's talking to new believers. He's talking to all of those who gave their life to Jesus, said yes to him. Now that you've done that, he's saying, he's given three things. You must continue to follow him, let your roots grow down into him, and let your lives be built on him. And I want to take those three things, and I want us to look at them and see, can we allow those things to make us be the right person? In fact, if you're taking notes, write this down. Um, who do you need to be? Who do you need to be? Whether you're married, whether you're single, single again, whatever, who do you need to be? You need to be this. You need to be someone who is following faithfully. Sounds simple, but it will change your life. Following faithfully. The first thing that we see where uh, Paul says, you must continue to follow him. In the Greek, that phrase means to walk. There, it, it doesn't, you're not taking any breaks. There's a consistent movement there. The, the, the picture is uh, a limited distractions, limited interruptions. The, the idea is to, to lessen the gap. That's the idea. When, whenever we've got some friends who, who like to drive and, and, and like go long distances on vacations, and a couple of times we've went with them, and, and whenever we drive, um, I, I like, if I'm following someone, I like to follow them closely, Okay. I don't like to go all the way back. I don't like to have a, you know, a, a half a mile distance between me and them. No, if, if I'm following you, I'm only going to be a couple of car lengths behind you. No matter how fast you're going, I'm there. I, I want to I lessen the gap. Following faithfully. A lot of relationships, what happens when, when we get into them. And listen, this is especially for those of you that are dating right now. Whenever we get into those relationships, they become distractions for us. They become interruptions for us. We go from walking with Jesus and following him to following them. And, and we do it honestly. Because society has taught us that relationships is what will bring you meaning and purpose and direction in life. Relationships is what will complete you. But I, I want us all to know that they don't. Relationships do not complete you. In fact, if you're married, your marriage will not complete you. Only Jesus does that. He's your creator. But you're going to hear this everywhere. Everywhere you go, you're going, to, you're going to hear this. Culture is going to say to you that you can't be happy and, and fulfilled without a soulmate. You, you may, some of you, you may walk into church and, and feel guilty sometimes, like, like you're, you're, you're not complete because you're not married, or you're some secondhand Christian because you're not married. And that's the wrong message. Some people might point at you and say, oh, you're, but you're single. You must be weird. Some of you are. It's okay. Amen. It's really, it's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's, it, anybody ever says to you that it's, it's just not the truth. Jesus completes you. He's the one that makes you valuable. He's the one that gives you purpose. He's the one that gives you direction in life. 
That's why if you're single, man, don't settle. Don't lower your standard. Don't, 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 don't compromise. Don't trade your purity in for, for, for some, somebody to love you. Don't do that at all. Follow Jesus. You're not called to get married. You're called to follow him faithfully. Keep following him. Man, that's, a, that's something that we all want in our life is someone who follows faithfully. That's the right person. Paul, he said it. You must continue to follow him, follow Jesus, continue to follow Jesus. And then he says, let your roots grow down into him. What, what is he saying there? Who do we need to be? Someone who's following faithfully and growing deeply. That, that's the idea there when he says, let your roots grow down deep into him. Rizao is the Greek word there. Rizao. It, it's, when, when you look at that, it, it really, it, what it means is to strengthen with roots. When you see that word, it, it, it's talking about someone who's thoroughly grounded. Let your roots grow down into him. Be strengthened by him. Listen, we, we live in a, in, a, in a society today that there's less grounded people than ever before. And one of the reasons why is just we just don't take following Jesus seriously. It's like, oh, you know, I'll follow him. I'll follow him someday, but just not right now. You know, I want to party a little bit. I want to live a little bit. Let me remind you of something. The life you live now determines the direction of your life later. Don't think for a moment that you can live any old way that you want to right here and it not affect you over there. This is why we have alcoholics. This is, this is why you have people that are addicted to something. They never woke, they didn't wake up one morning and think, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to become addicted. No, it, it just happened gradually. They didn't think for a moment that the decisions that they made now would affect them later, but it does. And that's why it's so important that we don't build our life on the things of the world. No, we want to grow down into him. What you do, it matters. Instead of growing deeper into the things of the world, you want to grow deeper into Christ. Be someone who's, who's growing more towards Jesus. That's who we want to be. You want to be the right one? Be someone who's growing deeply. You might say, well, what does that look like? Real quick, I want, to, I want to give you just a glimpse of what it looks like to grow deeply, okay? Paul, he would write to Timothy, and he would, he would say these words. I think it's a perfect picture of what it, a life looks like that's growing deeply into Christ. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, the Scripture says this, Let no one despise you. This is Paul. He's writing to his young protege, protege uh, Timothy, and he says, Let no one despise you for your youth. But set the believers an example. Set an example for them. And, and what does he say? Set an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Like the way that, that you, you talk. Set an example. Let me ask you this. You want to know if you're growing? If your roots are growing down deeply into Jesus? Has the way you talk changed since Jesus? Has your behavior changed? How about the way that you love? Do, do you find yourself having more love today than you did before Jesus? That, that's, a, that's an indicator of how deep your roots are growing. How about your faith? Is your faith growing? Does it really matter to you? Or, or like, is, is church today, is it just like you're just checking off some list? That's an indicator. He says, your purity, man, let's, let's just talk about purity for a moment. When it comes to relationships, purity matters. Last week, 
or, or week one, we, we said this um, in, in, the, in the Bible. It says, don't even let a hint, remember this? A hint of sexual immorality be in your life. A hint. And, and we talked about and we asked this question, what is a hint? And I, I hope when you walked out of here, you figured out that we all have a little bit of a hint. Like the standard is, is so high the, uh, the, of holiness. It, we need Jesus to help us achieve that. Purity. Sexual temptation. It, it's real. And you, you single folks, I, I would hate to be single. Just being honest. But please, don't underestimate it. It's a real struggle. Lust is real. And if you think for a moment, well, I'll just get married and it'll fix all of that. No, it won't. If you, if you're, if you have a porn problem right now, you'll just get married and you'll have a porn, porn problem when you're married. And that's a whole nother problem that happens. So the important thing is to, for us to fix it now, to become the right person now, to, to grow now. So what do you want to be? You want to be someone who's growing deeply into Christ. Your, your roots are, are becoming strengthened by him. You, you, you won't have the right relationship if you're not the right person. My prayer for us is that with God's help, we would be people, single or married, people who are following faithfully, who are growing deeply. And I want to give you number three. Number three is this, living consistently. Living consistently. The third thing that Paul said to this church is when he wrote, he says, and let your lives be built on him. I started studying that phrase this week. And in the Greek, it's an interesting phrase to me. I didn't really understand it at first, but that is a present it, the, the phrase is in the present tense participle, um, which really just indicates this. It's a continual action. So when, when Paul says build your life on, on Christ, he, it's not a one-time thing, but it's a continual thing. It, it continually happens. It, there's a consistency involved. That's why I said living consistently we want to be people who are living consistently. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, consistency, there's a deficiency in our society with that one. The only thing that I can see that's consistent, that we're doing consistently, is being inconsistent. I, mean, that's, I don't know if it's true for you, but it is. I, I, I can see it even in my own life. And that's not ideal for relationships. We need consistency in relationships. Like who wants to date somebody or be with somebody that is just all over the place? Somebody, you don't, you don't know who you're going to get the next morning. Or, you know, like you, you don't know is today is he going to be David Banner or tomorrow is he going to be the Incredible Hulk? I mean, you, you don't know. Like, that's inconsistent. Who wants to be with someone like that? Who wants to be with someone who, who like, half the time they show up, half the time they don't? Is, is that you? Think about it spiritually. Are you on, are you hot one moment and then, like, you're cold the next? We need to develop some consistency in our life. This is a big thing. Paul says, let your lives be built on him. Like consistently, consistent, live consistently. No on and off again stuff. Like if you're married, how can you expect to have a, a, a healthy marriage if you're not consistent? Consistency is like the name of the game. Now, I'll tell you this about consistency. Inconsistency kills intimacy. If you're inconsistent, it kills it. You're trying to follow Christ. You're, you're trying to, to, to follow him faithfully and, and, and grow deeply into him. If you're inconsistent, it's just going to kill the intimacy there. It's going to kill it every time.
I was thinking this week, like how, how can we strengthen our consistency? Really, what, what is it that we can add to our life that would help us be more consistent? And it hit me, it's community. Community is the key because community is, is with, with community comes accountability and, and we need that. It, it's, it's why so, some of us, um, well, all of us for that matter, the people that you allow into your life is so important. It really matters. The people that you allow to have access to you, they're, they're speaking into you. They're, they're either, either helping pull you towards Christ and grow your faith, or they're pushing you away towards the things of the world. And it's so important. Um, Psalms, uh, I'm not Psalms, Proverbs 13, 20 says this, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Let me just ask you a question. Um, are you a companion of fools? Or are you walking with the wise? Are you? When I read the Bible, you know who the, the, the Bible refers to a fool as someone who is rebelling against God. And the Bible says that if we walk with them, we're gonna suffer. So are are you struggling with consistency? There's an old phrase in leadership, and it goes something like this. Uh, Success doesn't come from what you do occasionally. It comes from what you do consistently. hard for me to get up this morning man it's a struggle I thought why don't I get somebody else to preach on a day like today but then there's this discipline that I've developed and it it hasn't like it hasn't been long it's only been like a, a year year and a half it hit me it's hard now but I'm gonna love it later. Today at 4.30, I will go to an L group at 4.30. I can promise you, I don't want to go. And it's not because I don't love my L group. I love them. They are the most dearest friends in my life. But I'll be laying on the couch and I'll be trying to catch up with that hour sleep that I lost. But here's what I know, I've developed a discipline. I know if I get up and I go to that group about five minutes after I'm there, I'm going to be so glad I went. Where are you struggling to be consistent? Is it walks with your spouse? Love notes? Date nights? We want to be people who are consistently growing. That's the kind of person you want to be. You, are you looking for some? You want to look for someone who's consistent. Who wants to date someone who's inconsistent? My goodness, I've had some of those. Well, I like you. I'm not sure I do. Two weeks later, they're breaking up with you. Then they're calling you a week later. I mean, my goodness, who wants that? Let me, I'm going to ask you one other question and I'm going to stop. What is one thing you do occasionally that would change your life if you did it consistently? What is one thing? Come on, what is one thing? Man, put that in your heart and start doing it. 
Start doing, who, who do you need to be? Who do you need to be? We need to be people who are following faithfully, following Jesus, growing deeply in him and consistently, consistently living for him, building our lives on him. Because to have the right relationships, you have to be right. There was one part of the verse that I left out. I didn't read to you, but I'm gonna go back to it now because like it's the closer. When Paul says all of this, he, he says all. He says, you know, follow faithfully, grow deeply, live consistently. Here's the why. Here's the why. He says this at the very end. He says, then your faith will grow strong in truth. You will, well, you were taught. It will grow strong in the truth that you were taught. And you will overflow with thankfulness. Overthrow, overflow with it. Like thankfulness. It only comes from healthy people. It only comes from healthy relationships. So you want to be healthy, become the right person. Become someone who faithfully follows Jesus. Come on, become that person. Keep, keep pressing on with him. Be someone who is growing deeply into him. And someone who is consistent, lives consistently building their life on Jesus. Come on, be that person. Be that person. Will you bow your heads? Will you bow your heads? I, I want to ask you this quick question, okay? And I just wonder if there's anyone here that's strong enough, strong enough to answer it. I wonder if anyone here would just say, you know what, um, Lance, I've not been the right person. I've just not. I've not been the right person, but with God's help, with His help, I'm going to become that right person. I'm gonna become it with his help. If that's you, wherever you are, would you just lift your hand? Just lift it up. You strong enough to admit it? Come on, lift it up. Lift it up, lift it up. Yeah, I'm gonna become the right person. Hands down, hands down. In, in this passage of scripture, Paul was talking to Christians. And so I, like, I, I have to end here because it's the foundation. It's where everything starts. You will never have the right relationship until you're in the right relationship. And that's a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm convinced that all, so many of our marriages, so many of our relationships are having problems because one or both are not saved. One or both do, doesn't have the, 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 the presence of God in their life. I'm wondering, is that way for you? Has there ever been a time in your life when you said yes to Jesus? Come on, let's just get honest. Has there ever been a time when you've said yes to Jesus? He's the one that makes you right. You wanna become the right person? Come to Jesus. Come on, come to Him. I wanna give you that opportunity right now, wherever you are, here in person or you're watching on the other side of a screen, why don't you say yes to Jesus Christ? Pray, pray this prayer with me. Pray this prayer. Just, just say, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And Jesus, I need to be forgiven. So will you please forgive me of my sins? Jesus, I am turning from my life of sin. I'm turning from that to a life surrendered to you. Jesus, I'm all yours. Go ahead, tell him that right now. I'm all yours, Jesus. Jesus, will you come into my heart? Come into my heart. I'm all yours. I'm all yours. Listen, um, if you just prayed that prayer, <laughs> if you just said yes to Jesus, let me tell you what happened. He stepped out of heaven and right into your heart right then. If you prayed that prayer, here's what I want to ask you to do. Just like I did a few moments ago, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. If you just said yes to Jesus, would you just raise your hand right now and raise it high? Just raise it high. Go ahead. Go ahead. Raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. Yeah, thank you. I see your hands. I see them. I see them. Yeah, raise it up. Raise it up. Those of you that are watching on the other side of a screen, you can raise your hand. And the way that you can raise your hand is that you can just click the little hand raised emoji at Online Church. You can follow the links that are in the chat rooms. You can send us a text message. Come on. You got to tell somebody. You got to tell somebody. Today, I said yes to Jesus. Jesus, I pray that you would change relationships, change marriages, change dating, change our friendships, change it. Help us to become the right person. Help us. 
I pray that we would follow you faithfully, that you would help us to be always growing down deeply into you and to live consistently, consistently building our life on you, Jesus. May that be our life. May we walk away from the things of the world. May we walk towards you. Thank you for those who've said yes to you today. We love you, we praise you, and it is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. And all God's people said, so I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again. It's all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I'm nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing. to be with you today, but we are not done yet. So for some of you, you probably just said yes to Jesus. This is what you have to look forward to. We get to celebrate. We get to celebrate what it means for a life to be changed for eternity. To go from death to life and to publicly say yes to Jesus. So this is what we're going to do. As he makes his way around uh, the tub, I want to invite his family up to uh, the stage around here. Y'all come on, fill around. Uh, we're going to baptize. So if you take your seat, yeah. we'll get yeah, to yeah, you go ahead. in a few minutes. Take, take your seat. Come on in here, David. Come on in here, friend. Okay, y'all, while, while David's getting in, let's just celebrate. Can we do that? Come on. We celebrate baptisms around here. Whenever you see someone going through the waters of baptism, this is a changed life right here. His shirt says, made new. All right, that's it. That's right, that's right. David is here today to, um, well, as a, as a testimony, right? A testimony to you and to, to me. And I want you to look around real quick. I want you to look around at your church family here. They're here to celebrate with you. And uh, your friends and family, my goodness, look at that. Hey, y'all come on in now. We're, we're one tight, close-knit close family here. I want to ask you this, okay? In front of all these people, have you said yes to Jesus Christ? Well, based upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk a new life. I'm proud of you. Great story, great testimony. Y'all, let's stand and celebrate. Come on. So come on my soul. Come on my soul. Amen. What an incredible opportunity to witness somebody publicly profess their faith and decision to follow. Jesus Christ as their Savior. Man, it's so incredible to be able to witness God working in the lives of people here at The Lift. And we are baptizing again next Sunday. So if you have said yes to Jesus but have not yet taken that next step, we would love to get you signed up for baptism. Just scan the QR code right below. Um, and we are just so excited for you to come get baptized with us here at The Lift. If you said yes to Jesus today, let us know. We've made it super easy. Just scan the QR code, text the number on the screen and say, I said yes, and somebody will reach out. We want to pray for you and just connect. So 
Make sure to come back next week as Pastor Lance continues the message series, Love is a Fight. And lastly, if this service was a blessing to you, um, please share this link with a friend, a family member, just somebody, some encouragement throughout the week. Thank you for tuning in. We love you and we will see you next week.